This is the Lean Builders Hoots on the Ground podcast with absolutely, positively no bullshito. Join us as we dig into exactly what lean construction is and how we can use these concepts and strategies in the field. This podcast will be different as we journey to job sites and mine the minds of lean builders, all in effort to pass forward building knowledge from those who have put their time in to learn a better way. Because that's just what lean builders do. What's up, y'all? Adam Hoots here, the lean builder, Hoots on the ground with no bullshito. And today I've got a solo episode for you, helping you be more effective with your time. We're going to get twice as much work done in half the time. By the time you're done listening to this podcast, you'll have some awesome and amazing ideas that you can take and utilize in your day-to-day production in order to get more things done. And before we get off into the episode, though, I want to give a super big shout out to Raphael Franca at Bosch or Find My Site. Rafa, you gave us one of the most amazing and awesome reviews on our new book, The Old Dog Lean Thesaurus. Buddy and I are super appreciative. For those of you that don't know Buddy, he is the OG Lean Builder, right? The Lean Builder book was written about Buddy Brumley and the way he was able to adapt and bring lean principles into his workflow are just simply amazing. So if you haven't gotten the book yet, go get the book. It's available on Amazon. Get it on the old dog, leanthesaurus.com. Dog is D-A-W-G. And then go leave us a review. We want feedback, right? This is only part one. This is only version one. We've got a special version two scheduled to come out by the end of the year. And we want to incorporate your feedback. So Lean Builder Nation, I'm counting on you. Go get the book. Again, the old dog, Lean Thesaurus. We really want to get some feedback from builders, right? We want to know, are these the right terms? Is this what uh, lean is in the field? And if it's not, we're humble enough to adjust it, modify it, and move it forward. These things have worked for Buddy and I in the field. and We want to pass them on to builders all throughout the nation who can benefit and take advantage of new things. Maybe they're not new. Maybe they're things you've been doing and they just have a little bit of a tweak on them. But we really want to take advantage and make lean simple for builders, right? That's our overall arching goal. And Again, today we want to talk about being effective with our time. I'm going to use what is called personal Kanban and we'll get to that towards the end. I know, Felipe, you'd be super proud of me. This also resembles a scrum board, maybe not quite as scientific as scrum, but I do have a three columns here. I have a to discuss, discussing, and discussed. We have made it through the introduction, so I'm going to go ahead and move that over to discussed, not discussed, but discussed like we done talked about it, so we're going to call that good. The next thing I want to talk about is a new story that I read recently. And we're going to talk about some personal clarity, leader standard work versus standard work. We're going to talk about weekly work plans, personal weekly work plans, followed by some personal Kanban. And then we're going to talk about this is just what lean builders do, baby. And so as we get going, I do want to encourage you to go back and listen to podcast number six. It was on the Eisenhower matrix, a matter of items that are important and urgent. We talked about the four quadrants. One being firefighting, two being lean builder, three being delegation, and four being waste. If you haven't seen that episode, go back and listen to that before you take this one in. That is a crucial step in what we're about to talk about today, right? You got to understand these tasks and where are they in, in a matter of how important and urgent are they? And so let's get moving here. I've got this. I'm, if you don't know, I am a super big news buff, right? I am on Cheddar News, Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, I even take in. And I tell you, it's just a matter to know what's going on in the world around me. It helps me talk about current events. It helps me keep conversation with some people who always go there. It always gives me something to talk about. And I came across an article. It must have been a week or two ago now. It told me that Earth's rotation is slowing down and soon we'll have an extra hour in the day. And so my question to you, Lean Builder Nation, is what would you do with that extra hour in your day? What would you do with a 25 hour day? Would you sleep more? Would you really work out now? Would you work more? Would you spend it with family? I know that's my answer. When I stop and I think about what would I do 
with an extra hour in my day, it's absolutely 100% would be spent with family. I don't know if that means with my children. I don't, I probably would start with my wife, right? Because I am in the process of working on that relationship. I love that gal to death. She does so much for our family and she's so underappreciated. I would spend that extra hour figuring out how can I appreciate her more? And that's just me. I'm curious. Leave it in the comments when we post this thing out there on LinkedIn. I want to know what would you do with an extra hour of time? Now, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is you really are going to get that extra hour of time. The Earth's rotation is really slowing down. So all you fact checkers out there, if you want to go fact check me, go ahead. The bad news is it's going to take us 200 million years before we get that extra hour. So we may not get that in our lifespan. But what we're going to talk about today, by being more effective with the time you're allotted on this earth, you too will be able to get that extra hour without waiting 200 million years. So without further ado, let's get this thing kicked off and continue to update our Kanban board as we go. That is our news story. We're going to call that one done. That is in disgust, not it, but we talked about it. Let's talk a little bit about personal clarity because this is important. You may or may not know this, but the average American has 77 years on this planet. 77 years of life. When you look at the average age of construction, it's 41 years old. Now that's debatable, plus or minus five years. So that tells me that the majority of people working in the construction industry have already experienced more than half of our lives. And we only have a about half of our lives left. And so this is the midpoint, right? This is the deciding point is what I have been doing for the past 41 years. Is that helping me be successful in life? Is that helping me go where I want to go? Or do I need to start, stop, or continue some things to make sure that I go where I want to go? Now, that is the big question here that we're talking about. Where do I want to go? Now, in order to find out where I want to go, I've got to have personal clarity. And this is a trick Jason Schroeder taught me over at Elevate. I took one of his boot camps and man, we talked about personal clarity and it just, the clouds parted. And from that moment on, I knew I wanted to be doing lean coaching. I knew I wanted to be helping the trade workers in the field who just are being overlooked, not allowing to innovate. That was my goal. The clarity came in almost an instant, but I found it through do taking personality profile at 16personalities.com. Then I looked at my strengths and then we take a look at our values. And then what is my purpose and mission on this earth? What is my icky guy as the Japanese say? What was I born to do? And from there, we try and establish a BHAG. What is my big, hairy, audacious goal that I want to get in my life? And then what is the vision of me? What is the vision I want other people to have? of Adam Hoots. And I've gone through this a couple of different times since I've take, taken that boot camp. I've actually ran workshops on this, so we've talked a lot about it because this is the first step in being effective with your time. You have to know what do you want? What do you want with your time here on this earth, Lean Building Nation? And then once we have personal clarity on what we want, we've gone through our strengths, we've gone through our values, we start to understand our goal, and who we are, who we want to be on this planet, then we can really start to talk about what are the things that we have to do every day in order to be successful in our work role, in our family role, in our life role. And what are the what are the priorities do we have, right? Is family first? Is God first? Is the church first? Is work first? Is what is it to you? And again, I know a lot of us lean professionals talk about oh, family first and personal life first. And I know that is not true for everybody. And so what makes you happy, Lean Builder Nation? Put that first. If it means no vacation and work all the time, if that truly makes your heart smile, then do that. For me personally, God is at that tipping point of the spear and by, followed by a close second is my family and then followed by work and then things that I love, right? Baseball, golf, being outdoors, that sort of thing. Reading, learning, that is, that'd probably be a close three followed by my hobbies and sports. And so I urge you, like I urge you, Lean Builder Nation, go and find out what is it that you want, become very clear on the person that you want to be. And you can do that through these steps. Again, it's establishing your strengths, looking at your values, identifying your purpose and mission, 
What is your big, hairy, audacious goal? What is people's vision of you? High performing habits. What are the habits that you have that you are high performing in? When do you operate best? That's another thing to look at. And then what kind of commitments can you make? How do you establish your standard role? And then what are your next milestones in order to take you to where you want to be? That's getting clear with where, what direction you're headed in. And so Lean Builder Nation, if you need some help, if you want the document, I will share it with you the same way Jason shared it with me. It's a personal clarity document that really helps you understand what do you want with your life? Where do you want to go in the next 40 plus years? Is what you've done, has it been successful? Has it gotten you to where you want to be? Now is the time to pause and reflect on your life and say, what should I start? What should I stop? And then what should I continue doing in order to get to the life that I want to be? Because you can have a remarkable life. You can have the life that you've always desired, that you've always wanted, but you have to take control and you have to design certain things into that life. And so Lean Builder Nation, what do you want? And this is how we're going to get it. We're going to get clear. And then we're going to work the rest of this podcast to help show you how to take action on that clarity. As we're starting to get clear on what we want to do as a person, we've got to think again, we've only got a certain amount of time left. And how are we going to block out that time in order to achieve the goals that we just established in our personal clarity document? So as we transition over from personal clarity into standard work, It's a great time to talk about time blocking. So time blocking is taking a weekly, I do mine in Excel, but taking a weekly schedule, you've got the hours you work on the left-hand side or the hours that you're awake on the left-hand side. Shoot, you can have all 24 hours if you want to track your sleep as well, along with Sunday to Saturday in a week. And you literally block out the time that you're going to spend doing the things that you've accumulated on your to-do list. Now, This is the difference. I'm sure you've seen those social media posts where billionaires don't do to-do lists. You're right. They don't. They time block and time box. And we'll talk about time boxing in a little bit, but they do have to-do lists. They just funnel those to-do lists into time blocks within their week. They have standard work where they come and they're able to hit their work and they've got it in a routine where they're able to be successful and not think about what comes next. They've programmed, they've conditioned themselves to be able to work on the time block with buffers in between to allow for variation. And that's how we get more things done. We can do so using personal Kanban boards. We can do so using Excel documents, but this is standard work, right? This, I'll even move this weekly work plan in because this is really where from a job site perspective, we establish weekly work plans on a standard basis, usually Thursday, Friday of the week for the next week. We're measuring them. What was our PPC as a team? We're displaying that information to really help encourage the team to get back on track or to slow down if they're ahead. And weekly work plans are a part of somebody's standard work. It's a part of our project team's standard work. From a personal standpoint, if I'm a field leader, I should have standard work that involves looking at the drawings daily, looking at the schedule daily, walking the field daily, meeting with all of my trade partners daily. Like these are things that are non-negotiables, things that I have to do in order to be successful at the role that I am in now. And so that is a real key part to what we're talking about here, right? The standard work is work that for the role that I am in now. Now, that is not always going to be the case. If you're like me, and you want to you want to lead above the pack, you want to take that next level, you want to bite off more than you can chew in order to get outside your comfort zone and learn and grow as a human being. Now we're starting to talk about leader standard work. So what are those things that you're doing in order to obtain or achieve the goals that you set forward in that personal clarity document? And so we can do this through, again, filtering that personal clarity document down into these goals and then scheduling activities using colors to match What are the things I'm doing in order to achieve those goals? And so we do this just like we schedule construction projects. That's the crazy thing about this. We start at the top and we have this full on master plan for our schedule, or as some people have the CPM and the CPM kind of helps us to with personal clarity. Like what do we have to do for this project? What do we want to do? And so this is our personal clarity document. And then we start diving in. And we get closer, right? These are those milestones. 
right? We call this phase planning in the last planner system. And we're pulling, right? This is our pull plans. And so I'm encouraging you, yeah, look at your life. Look at the next six months of your life and or year of your life or look at the last 40 years. What are you going to do in those 40 years to really achieve, to make your life purposeful and to make it impactful for the reason that you were put here on this earth? And then once you get your milestone, now we start looking three to six weeks ahead. And this is the look ahead planning. <coughs> this is the look ahead planning that the last planner system talks about. Again, we're removing roadblocks. What's in my way? How am I going to actually, again, get clear on my document? And how am I actually going to block time in order to make it happen? And then we start talking about the weekly work plan. And this is one week ahead. This is looking out my next week and I have time blocked. And then I'm starting to time box in my daily huddle. And this is, again, by the day, what am I learning and how am I feeding back up to my personal clarity document, right? How am I hitting the pause and reflect button on a pretty regular basis in order to really drive clarity within are the things that I am doing on a daily basis aligning with my overarching goal of changing this construction world and bringing respect back to this construction world, to the workers who deserve it, who are busting their butts, even in spite of these terrible schedules that us GCs are putting out, these workers are still making it happen. And so am I, are the things that I'm doing on a daily basis aligning with that overall goal? And we do that by analyzing what am I doing daily? What am I doing weekly? Do I have a plan for the next three to six weeks? Do I have key milestones throughout my rest of my life that really align towards this personal clarity that we spent a little bit of time talking about? And this leader standard work, this is things above and beyond. This is things that I know if I do will make me a leader within the construction industry. I know that then people can rely on me to carry them when they're down. People can rely on me to set a good example, to be, to practice what I preach, right? I am not the best, most leanest human being on this earth. I have faults. I have mistakes, but I try every day to be as lean as I can be, to be as that's what lean builders do, right? We understand or we're humble enough and self-aware enough to understand that we are not the most leanest human beings on the earth. But I guarantee you, I will be better tomorrow than I am today. And so I encourage you to think about that lean builder nation. How can you be better tomorrow than you are today? It all happens through developing personal clarity and then developing your standard work figuring out what can I take on from a leader standard work to really drive my overarching mission and align my day-to-day -day tasks with my overarching goal of my life. And so with that, I hope you have a good understanding of leader standard work. Again, as, we're, as we have these times and days in the, this Excel sheet, uh, when we talk about leader standard work and standard work, we are blocking out specific times for specific tasks to take place. Very similar to how we do the weekly work plan, we are time blocking. And we're pretty good at that in construction. We're pretty good at saying, yeah, I'm gonna do X at this time, Y at this time, and Z at this time. It's planning, it's scheduling. That is what we do best. But what we are terrible at in construction is execution, a concept called time boxing. So I know when I have a task, like this podcast was set for 10 a.m. Eastern on Friday, and I know that at 10 a.m. Eastern, I'm going to set a stopwatch and I'm going to time and see how long does it take me to record this podcast, edit this podcast and get it over to the Lean Builder team for publication. And so then I can go back and feed that information back into my plan and I start to know how long it's going to take me to do a solo podcast or a podcast with a guest or a podcast with a guest who likes to talk a little bit more than the normal human being. And so... These are what really helps me to refine it. So time blocking my week, but then also execution of this, right? Going and setting the timer and saying, that podcast took me one hour and five minutes, not 45 minutes. And the next time I know I'm planning the similar podcast, I can adjust my time for how long it's actually going to take me because now I can start to account for variation. I can start to account for bottlenecks. I can start to account for slip ups and that sort of thing. So again, Weekly work plans, not just a tool for the project site, but also a tool for a construction team. Again, establishing these intermediate weekly goals and then taking those goals and breaking them down into a daily Kanban system to make sure the things that you're doing are truly leading to that overarching goal for the week. And so 
I want to talk a little bit about the system that I'm using here. Again, it's called personal Kanban, and there are only two rules with personal Kanban, okay? I was fortunate enough to take a class with Jim Benson and Tony Ann, Dean Maria Berry. Unbelievable class, hilarious gentleman. Jim's, Jim's a great guy. Read the book, would highly recommend it, but it comes down to two things. One, we're going to visualize our work. And so that means anything that takes you more than 10 minutes to do, make a post-it note for it and put it in your backlog or put it in your to do, to discuss column. And then the second one is we're going to limit our work in progress. And so this column you can see is much smaller than this column in this column. That is very intentional. It's the size of one post-it note. You also notice as we're going through here, I never had more than two items in my to-do or to in my discussing column. Right? So right now we only have one. We're talking about personal Kanban. That's it. These headers, these columns could say absolutely anything you want. It could say to do, doing, done. It could say doing, follow up, done. It could say doing, what did I learn, retrospective. Like whatever you want these columns to say, can say, you can have different colors for different tasks due for different people. You can absolutely customize this board, this process for anything that you're doing. You can use Mural, you can use Miro. There are apps like Trello. All of these things will help you as you take on this Kanban initiative. And so if you want to get more things done in your day, start visualizing your work. The other thing that this does for you is if you're in a work and you're in the groove, you've planned your day, you're in there, and then you've got this thing working like we're doing now, and your boss comes in and says, hey, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. It's an emergency. What you do is you look over at your board and you say, okay, boss, and you make that post-it note and you put it up there and you say, help me prioritize this task with these other things that I'm doing. Then your boss can literally see everything that you've been doing. Or the other thing, at the end of a job or at the end of a week, sometimes people say, what have you been doing? <laughs> Here's what I've been doing, okay? This is all the things that I've been working on. It really helps you to communicate the things you're working on and the status of those things with anybody without even saying a word. And so it's a great way to be more effective with your time. One, just plan your day. Two, how are you actually making it tangible? How are you making your work tangible so that you can actually move things through? And this can look like a bunch of different things. Again, there's Trello, there's Outlook, there's Task, there's a million different apps out there, monday.com, all of these things really work in a very similar fashion where we line up everything that we have to do and then we start pulling things based on priority while minimizing, again, respecting the production laws, those four production laws that we often talk about. We're gonna work in small batches, limit our work in progress, and we're gonna finish things as we go. We're gonna look for bottlenecks. We're gonna optimize things to our bottleneck. We're gonna look for variation. We're gonna be, a efficient with our, us, our time, our resources. We're going to work buffers in there because we know variation is going to hit us. People are going to need things from us and we're going to have to adjust. There's going to be some fires that we have to fight. But remember, what do lean builders do? Lean builder nation. Lean builders, we live in that quadrant too of things that are not urgent, but they're important, right? We're planning things, we're executing things, we're minimizing the fires. We're delegating via the five levels of delegation. Again, if you haven't taken in that podcast, Keon wrote a blog on the five levels of delegation. It's fantastic. I forget the number. It's maybe 20, 25, 30, somewhere in there. Go back and check that out. So as lean builders, again, just this is just what lean builders do. We live in that not urgent but important quadrant. We fight fires as we have to in that important and urgent quadrant. We delegate using the five levels of delegation, and then we just get rid of the tasks in that fourth quadrant, in that waste quadrant, things that are not important and not urgent, we don't do them, right? Because that's just what lean builders do, baby. So if you wanna start being more effective with your time, I would highly suggest you look at personal Kanban, you use a system like this, look at Scrum, take Felipe's Scrum class. It's a fantastic way to get in this. Go look for Jim Benson's next personal Kanban class. Go out there, and do some things different, experiment, try something new, because that's ultimately what lean builders do. We try things new in order to say, did we get better tomorrow than we were today? Mm -hmm.